Hey, 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 happy Wednesday. It is Sarah Jane from Access Your True Nature. If you're hopping in here, please share, please like. I'm going to talk a lot today about blind faith and doubt and how to lean into trust. Um, there's always nothing more empowering than to really look at what the meaning of life means to you. Uh, with all the craziness going on around you and uh, in the world and how you can play your part in coming alive in in having these deep right relationship and conversations hi tony nice to see you um i love it when conscious hi Corleen, amazing empowered awesome women join these conversations with me because we can go so much further together than we can apart and I really just I know I'm sounding like a bit of a stuck record at the moment but I just see this every day that this epidemic that we're facing at the moment is just this crisis of trust in the world and um, so many people right now they don't know who to trust or what to trust or when to trust or how to trust hi Alexandra and Faith in ourselves and others is on a very big decline in case you haven't noticed, you know There's just so much suspicion and so much collective fear. That's just amplifying This problem that's just making people shut down. It's the sheepless life and we're being told this eclipse is doing it again Wake up. Let's look at the dark stuff um, Trump is the shadow that's really in your face right now. Zuma has been that for Africa for ages and and this is where people are going into doubt and I was looking at this definition of doubt in the dictionary that's all about integrity and truth and ability, it's intentionality, uh, where you're putting your strength in someone or something and that, that's the belief and the reliance on connection to the divine and the divine is you, We're co we come from divine and it is our divine birthright to lean into trust to trust that our needs are going to be taken care of but we have to ask you know as, as babies we trust innately that we're going to be fed that we're going to have our nappies changed that we're going to be kept safe and and more than anything uh, you know I'm not here to make people comfortable I'm here to get people to wake up and stop leading this sheepless life and return to trust and have these conversations hi Joanne Type your comments and, and questions below. I'd love you to join this conversation. Because we have, don't we? I mean, we have so much access to the most meaningful things in life when we just trust ourselves. And we know we, we can love and we are loved and we belong and we know what our purpose is. And we can't, we can't be part of sacred activism we can't be part of movements that are bigger than our selfish wise unless we're taking care of ourselves and we can't take care of ourselves if we're not trusting that we're cared for um you know i love victor victor frankl's work and he says that between stimulus and response there's this space and in this space is our power to to really choose our response and in that response um that's where the freedom is and then I don't really think that anybody ever arises above extreme suffering when they're actually in it. You know, I speak to women every day that are in pain, they're just surviving, they're really hanging on to their sanity, to their some semblance of, of livelihood. And yet we're here to be alive. You know, we're supposed to be here to explore our aliveness. And, um, you know, that's that, that, that little glimmer of hope, that little bit of light that comes, comes through and you just think, oh, okay, I've got it. And then something comes along and smacks you back into this place of doubt, of lack of trust, instead of just trusting that you've got you, that you are going to be all right. And you can't talk to see there goes. It's really windy out here. Um, you know, if you're not trusting in yourself, you're not going to be able to trust anybody else. You're always going to go to that there's something to judge and there's something to be afraid of in the external world. And without trust, without trusting in ourselves, that deep down that's always there and we only use it for emergencies, we keep hitting the blocks. We keep 
resisting our growth. We keep postponing our mission and our voice and that we matter and that we're changing things in our own way. And, and this is where we sabotage relationships and we delay the bliss and the joy that we came here to live in our lives. Um, you know, I love Daniel Laporte and um, what she says about falling down, that we actually have to fall for the lies to get to our truth sometimes and stop going, oh well, you know, deep down I knew this was going to happen. Um, I, you know, it's the trust in the worst, but we don't trust in the deep down, in that we are born here to be joyful, to, you know, to be happy. Yes, Joanne. You know, we have to know what makes us happy. We have to, we have to look at where is this confusion leading to the character, and how can we take our part and our responsibility in making the world better. You know, it's personal, it's an inside job, and that's the dance, that's where the contrast is. And the extremes are making us look at the parts that we don't love, that we don't like the chaos, um, that we don't want to be in the eye of the storm, rather than knowing that we are, we are the eye, we're in the quest all the time, this is the hero's journey. And it's in the questioning, it's in the curiosity, rather than going round and round in the same old circle and going, I don't trust, I don't trust, or having blind faith that keeps us away from our purpose. There's a naivety to that, where we're ignoring and separating ourselves from the collective distrust, where we're doubting whether we're capable, whether we're enough, whether we're worthy, you know, whether we're going to succeed. Um, we doubt that we're even deserving of joy or happiness, as you said, Joanna. Um, you know, and I know it's so easy to go back into doubt. We visit that place a lot, I certainly do, um, where I fall out of grace and trust that I've got this and then ask for the right people to come and support me. And if we want connection, we have to be willing to ask the question of what is really going on here and how can I change this and take accountability and identify it before I say I don't trust people. You know, and the power is in the choice of actually saying, I'm taking accountability for this. I'm going to be conscious enough to explore exactly where this started, where I stopped trusting and listening to my inner compass, listening to my body and stop running away from it. You know, I, I often go into that place where I go, why would anyone listen to me? Why do you guys join me on these, on these little musings? You know, why, why do the animals trust people when we've abused them for so long? And they do, because it's, that's our true nature. That is what joy is. That's what happiness is. And, you know, I had to stop listening to people saying, oh, well, no one relates to being traumatized. Nobody, nobody's, nobody relates to being depressed. And I have to find some fancy way of glossing over that. You know, discomfort is part of growth, and it's in the struggle that we grow. And if if doubt has been plaguing you, you know, let's look at some pragmatic ways that you can start to get back into what do you want and what do you need, and trusting that you came here to make a difference. You came here to be the difference, to be generous, to be better, to have better, and you can't do that without faith. And you can't have faith if you're not willing to trust. You know, we need the healthy, rational fear. And, you know, we're not, I'm not saying get rid of doubt, but see it as the gift that it is, that in the possibility of doubt, you stretch into trusting that you have something important to share, trusting in your abilities, trusting that you can figure it out, and trusting that you're building something that you haven't maybe done before. And, and trust that you cannot support, especially when you're afraid. You know, that's the part where we always shut down, is in the, in the, in the risk of being vulnerable. You can't trust without being vulnerable. You can't trust if your heart isn't wide open. You can't trust if you you don't allow yourself to break your own expectations and for other people to to show up exactly how they are. And that's the courage, and society's telling us that courage has to be some huge, big act of thunder and fireworks. And for me, it's in the small steps. It starts with trusting a little bit more than yesterday, 
that I have the ability to change, that I have the ability to express my truth just as you do. And the only way to come back to trust is to take action, imperfect action. Because when you do that, you get more clarity and you become more confident, competent and you build confidence. You know, people say, I want confidence. No, you don't. You don't. You know what you know. You are confident. You've just gone away from trust. So even if you doubt, even if you are not that trusting, go anyway. That way you stop delaying, you stop avoiding, you stop resisting, and you expand your edges and you get to do better in what you came here to do. And I know how easy it is to go into the, oh, I can't until this happens. Or, um, you know, I was having a conversation with a woman yesterday who knows what she's doing right now is not working for her and her body. And she's put on an incredible amount of weight. And she said, well, I have to wait until I make some money. And I said, no, you don't. Go over to your fridge and tell me what you've got in there right now. You don't have to wait until you've got the money. You know, you don't have to keep eating the stuff that your body's saying, please don't do this. It's inf making me inflamed. It's making me have brain fog. Use what you have. Trust what you already have. But And take an action. You know, um... She had vegetables, she had, had some bones in her in her deep freeze. Go make a pot of bones, bone broth. Because without the energy and the sustenance, if you're not taking care of your body, you cannot be part of any part of change or sacred activism. You know, and I get people say, why are you so intense? Why are you so, so angry? Why are you so whatever? That's just a nice diversion into shaming you into not doing something great with your anger, with your silence, with your frustration. Start with what you have, okay? Um, if you don't think you have resources, you get much more resourceful. And when you do, when you go there, you start to see there's assets everywhere. People, money comes to you through people. Kindness comes through people. Take one step into asking for what you want, even when it's uncomfortable. And stop fooling yourself to say you're going to get there one day when you have the money, when you lose the way. You know, don't live your life with regrets. Begin where you can. So what are you waiting for right now? You know, where are you delaying and putting things off and procrastinating? And saying, I can't trust this and I can't trust myself. Write it down. Go do it. Take one step now. Don't delay, because your soul doesn't care what's convenient. Your spirit only cares about alignment and attuning to your north compass, your intuitive deep down knowing and trusting that. You know, um, you've got to get into the discomfort if you're not, not used to asking, if you're the one that gives all the time. We need to go deep and we need to be honest with what, what we need and go, get down, fall down from grace and get really honest about what you're really afraid of. What's the worst case scenario? What would? What's the worst thing that could happen? And what's the best thing that could happen? Play the what if game. Get really present with what that feels like in your body first. And then go into the no thinking space that I teach in the trust process. And then you can future. But you can't get into creating a future if you're not present in the now. And when we're not, when we're living from the past and all the fears and all the reasons and justifications why you can't trust, then you disconnect. And this is where so many people are feeling alone and misunderstood and not heard and they're so out of trust and disconnected with their own voice that if you can't even hear your own voice, how can anybody else? Oh, Joanne, my pleasure. I'm on a rant um, and it feels great. It feels really alive to have these conversations. So, you know, take accountability for your own growth, for your re own return to trust. Because we grow, it's just part of our human nature that we grow through natural tension. We grow through bravery. We grow through courage to do the things that we, we don't think that we can do. We grow through bringing the shadows into the light through our deep down and you have to motivate yourself you can't expect someone else to give you the answers because what's true for you is not true for somebody else and not everybody is achieving that because they keep looking at well I can't trust you um, 
you know, rather than looking at how can I trust myself in this moment. And there's so many people right now that are feeling like there's this huge, great separation sickness. I talk about it all the time, where they can't trust other people because they're not trusting themselves. And they're saying, oh, nobody understands, or they're talking from a place of supremacy or superiority or racial prejudice. It's a big one right now. And nobody's feeling their deep down. Nobody's following their natural impulse, which is toward connection, which is toward love, which is toward generation. And we just keep creating more and more separation. And more people are retracting. And they're feeling hurt. And they're feeling desperate. And when we're desperate, we're not clear. And when we're not trusting, we stop being kind. We stop being patient. We stop being persistent in our efforts to change one inch at a time because we don't believe we're connected to everything. We've forgotten how to trust that we are connected to the divine. We're part of this beautiful web that has no weaver. We have to trust in spirit and we've got to go back to our true nature, not this dog-eat-dog -dog reality. And you can't do that if you're feeling separate or that the world isn't a safe place or that people can't be trusted. So what do you need to do right now to really create this beautiful place of space to return to trusting yourself, trusting in divine, trusting in God and the divine and trusting in other people, trusting that you're enough. You know, if until we go there, we just keep feeding this misabuse of power in the world right now that says, I'm more privileged to you and you need to be very, very afraid. Um, you know, the only way that we're going to get over separatism is to go be kind, to go ask for what you want, to open your heart, to ha use discernment, not blind faith, because that's where right relationship is. And it starts with you and you recognizing that where you have been out of trust with yourself and your body and what you've been creating from resistance and from distrust is the separation, which is the complete opposite to what you really want. So all you have to do is ask and you'll be surprised how willing people are to have that connection. And, and just know that you can listen to the wise woman within you and trust that she will lead you into the light. You came in knowing She's just been so quiet over all the noise in your head. So how can you make this the day that you just take one step through faith and action and love and compassion and patience to return to trust and live better than you did the day before? How about that? Type your comments and questions and, and what one thing you're going to have. When you trust yourself, nothing bad happens, Joanna. Yeah, and sometimes bad things happen to great people, but it's no reason to stop trusting. You know, there's always a gift. I always say that there was a gift in my depression. There was a gift in the darkest times of my life. Did I get it overnight? No, it came little by little as I returned to, to the trust and, and was open to receiving and identifying where the root cause of that started. Because oftentimes our bodies are giving us energetic nudges, our lives, there's signs everywhere that are telling us that we're out of attunement, we're out of congruence, we're out of trust. And, you know, we have to, this is part of, I love Brene Brown's work and what she says about trust that requires braving. And I'll, I want to work through the, the acronym of braving. Um, if that's something that you're interested to over the next couple of days. But, you know, B, the B in braving starts with having very clear boundaries, asking for what you want and looking at where you're not being flexible because you've gone into putting these huge heart walls around you and big barriers up because you believe that you need to protect yourself. When you're living from trust and you're open to the generosity of spirit and love and present moment, then there's the compassion that can give you the awareness that you need when you're out of, you know, where you perhaps need to strengthen your boundaries, but be flexible in your boundaries. Boundaries are flexible. Barriers are not. They're impermeable. No one can get through. And energy 
energy goes where energy flows so you have to get honest and you have to get really conscious and start having more of these conversations and just taking imperfect action hi sue um you know competence comes through confidence and you can't be confident if you're out of trust so talk about you know can we start talking about what we need in these conversations can we have some comments and shares share this conversation with other people through reciprocity we grow together um we got to go so much further together than apart so if this is resonating with you if you know someone that could benefit from this conversation please share it please share it with others so that we can stop saying i don't trust you there's no agenda here other than for me to show up and ask in every conversation when i push my out my comfort zones of showing up in in video um and not giving a you know a crap about what i look like or if the lighting's great or if the sound is great or if the wind is you know going to going to interfere of asking what energy do i need in this moment to move forward and then tuning into my body and tuning into the body of my work which is to support people to return to trust so that they can show up and do the work they came here to do in the work in the world uh, i'm glad you get me alexandra um you know this is bigger than all of us and we have to know what we want and we have to be be brave enough to actually ask for what we want and listen to the child parts that are too afraid to ask because maybe you weren't heard or maybe you were shamed or maybe you were rejected and you got so desensitized to the no that you don't even know that the no's from your childhood are running your past now and and be willing to keep going as children we knew if we didn't get what we wanted from one person we kept going until somebody said yes so can you trust that you are going to receive if you just ask and start living from this place where you're reliable okay that's the r in braving is the reliability you know so often i even found myself today i had a client a new client um rescheduled an appointment twice and she didn't show up today and there was a part of me that was saying i wonder if she's going to show up can i trust her to show up or can i trust her to do what she's doing and how much of what her not honoring her own appointments with herself and my time and investment and commitment to meet her there is showing up in other areas of her life and and then having to go back into the kindness and the compassion to just say you know what everybody gets it when they get it and sometimes we need to fall into the lies to return to trust so you know stop lying to yourself and also look at where you need to like i did today of 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 re re um visiting my boundaries as far as people booking first appointments with me um because time is the one thing we don't get back so you know let's go there let's have more of these conversations thank you for joining me today um i appreciate you so much and wherever you are in the world i hope you have a wonderful day be reliable do what you're going to going to do do what you say you're going to do not once but over and over and over again it's been one of my biggest growth lessons in life is looking at how can i trust people that don't do what they're going to say what they say they're going to do um you know it's just like i have a, another big story that i'll say for another day um that no longer has a charge on it because it stopped me from feeling alive into i am powerful in my trusting myself that i've got this that i don't have to rely on other people to create safety for me i get to create my own safety and either you come with me and we have these honest conversations and we take um a line action or you go and you just have a great life you know the choice is yours and the power of choice is what changes everything so um let me know what thing you're going to take today hi lisa hi gersh nice to see you here if you just joined um i invite you to listen to the replay please share this please comment um and let's 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 get back into trust okay because this doubt thing um you're not mrs doubt fire you're potent and you're you're creative and you're resourceful and you've got this so have a beautiful day being you and know that you're loved and remember the world isn't waiting for someone like you 
They're waiting for you and what only you have to give to the world. So go do that and do it again and do it again and do it again because your reliability strengthens your trust and also allows other people to know that they are reliable and trustworthy. And that's how we get to change everything. All right. Take care. Bye. Mwah.